On May 10th a Valiant bomber delivered the final bomb components for the short granite device. It arrived three days late due to severe headwinds experienced on the flight from San Francisco to Honolulu. By this time, the firing order had been changed by Aldermaster. Orange Herald, small, would now be fired before Green Bamboo and Orange Herald, large, was cancelled, either due to the confidence in the experimental devices or the test device itself could not be prepared in time. Malden Island was the site for the first shot. Due to the unknown nature of the devices to be tested, it was considered safer to conduct the tests on the small, uninhabited island. All of the instruments on the island would be focused on a point in the area 1.5 miles offshore 8,000 feet high. Australian and New Zealand observers arrived on May 11th in time for the operational rehearsal with a high explosive round. The rehearsal included evacuation of all personnel from Malden Island and the withdrawal of the ships to their operational positions. A meteorological conference on May 14 decided that the weather outlook continued to be favorable and later that day the task force commander, Air Vice Marshal Wilfred Holton, ordered the initiation of the firing phase. Foreign observers embarked on the HMS Alert, on loan from the Naval Commander-in-Chief, Far East. Eleven hours before the shot the countdown began. One hour later the Shackleto aircraft prepared for their patrols of the danger area. Eight hours before the shot the Shackletoes took off along with low-level and high-level reconnaissance aircraft. The Valiant bomber crew, along with the Canberra, Sniffer, crews, received their final briefings. At dawn on May 15 the scientists completed the last-minute checks of the weapon telemetry systems. At first light a helicopter from the HMS Warrior evacuated the remaining men from Malden Island. By 8.30 a.m. all scientists were on board the HMS Narvik and HMS Warrior. By 9.30 all ships were at their designated shot time positions and in a state of readiness. All personnel wore protective clothing and were equipped with film badges. Those observing the shot on deck wore anti-flash gear, goggles, and respirators. The Shackletoes reported the danger zone was clear, the meteorological situation looked promising, and the scientists made their last checks on the bomb before the firing circuits were inserted. Two hours before shot time the Valiant took off for Malden Island with its nuclear payload. The Valiant had an hour before drop time when it reached Malden Island and conducted signal checks while circling the perimeter. The bomber was guided in by radar from the HMS Narvik and HMS Warrior, which also documented the bomb trajectory. The Valiant, piloted by Wing Commander K. Hubbard, dropped the nuclear device on its third run over Malden Island at approximately 10.38 am. The release of the bomb was controlled remotely via the HMS Narvik control desk. Hubbard then maneuvered the bomber into a steep dive away from the falling bomb to reach a safer distance from the explosion. The bomb free fell for 52 seconds before exploding 418 yards short of its intended zero point. Cameras at two sites on Malden Island photographed the explosion. The footage would later be used to plot a radius time curve for yield estimations. The cloud remained in the sky for most of the day before drifting away slowly to the east. The noise of the explosion was described as being surprisingly small by observers on the HMS Warrior. Described as sounding like the popping of distant gunfire, the blast wave was noticeable on both the deck and below and felt as a sudden increase then release of pressure in the ears. First re-entry on Malden was made by helicopter from the HMS Warrior. Aldermaston scientists on the helicopter considered it safe to approach closer after getting within five miles of the island. Old boats were found to be burning, the runway was relatively undamaged and roads in good condition. A pig was found unharmed on the island hiding behind an old vehicle. 
Radioactive contamination was light and small fires were still burning when the green light was given for land re-entry and permission for the Narvik and Warrior to moor offshore. The first sniffer aircraft entered the cloud one hour after detonation. The yield was quickly estimated at 300 kilotons. It was clear early on that the experimental principle of radiation implosion had worked. Despite this, the yield was still lower than hoped. The results of the explosion resulted in the cancellation of the green granite shot since it was highly doubted to be more successful based on the post-short granite findings. With the cancellation of green granite, a new shot was added to the operation code named Purple Granite. 